And it's this, that if you flip a coin, that each time you flip a coin, even if it turns up tails six straight times, what are the chances the next time? It's still 50-50. And the Nats have kind of been in a stretch where in winner take all, it just keeps coming up tails against them. And then last night, it ended up going the right way for him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. That, that it's not that in a one game scenario, it is not indicating some flaw with the team. That no. it just stuff happens, man. Yeah. And, and the narrative last, also, last John. The narrative also, if they would have lost the game, would have been same old Nats. They can't that's win. That's right. They can't well, win that's the what post. I'm saying. Yeah. And the da- Davy Davy made a Davey mistake. Davy sucks. He should have started Strauss. Yeah, yeah. So all the buttons he pushed last night. You know, obviously Max wasn't great. But they were still right. in the ball game. But all the buttons he pushed, Strassi coming in, pinch yes. hitting, pinch hitting Taylor, pinch hitting Zim, um, Dozier earlier. Hudson closing it down because Hudson. some people were like, maybe go to Doolittle. I said, John, I said all last week. I said I don't want to see anybody else besides Max, right? Strassi, Corbin, Strassi. and Hudson. Those are the only guys yeah. I want to see. And you know, well, the we problem is Corbin. now. See. Yeah, and in a longer series, I mean, again, I think that, you know, like to me, and that's a, that's a scary spot because I think that the Brewers are the 10 team to the 10th best team, but they have uh, the way they were set up is that in a one-game scenario, yeah. they're, they're dangerous enough that they could beat any of those teams. Definitely, definitely. Uh, just unbelievable. And, you know, we had F.P. Santangelo on earlier in the first segment, and, you know, can you imagine being 20 years old and coming up big like that? I mean, he did it all season. Wow. He did it last yeah. year. Yeah. But then such a big moment, and he doesn't have all of this scar tissue that the rest of us have <laughs> living in D.C. He also was smart enough, at least he talked about it after the game, he wanted to get in the rundown to assure that Rendon <laughs> right, right, made right. it gave home. More, gave him more yeah. time. He's that aware. Yeah, really smart. And then to really come up big, too, after that botch in the outfield, whatever happened there. Um, so, man. I... I did. A, I love him as a player. I don't. You know, there are a couple of points. One would be, you know, when you sit there and think about losing Harper in the off season, they replaced him with another Harper, a better Harper, to be honest. I mean, right. Juan Soto is a better offensive player than than Bryce Harper. He doesn't have the raw power. But the other point, I did a game. I did a, a couple of games this year where I had Chipper Jones in the booth with me, and one was for three innings, and one was for a full game. And for the full game, you know, Chipper works for the Braves. And so he's really familiar with Acuna. But we did a piece on it on the ESPN TV game where we showed kind of the grouping of 22-year-olds. So we, we took Soto, Acuna, Tatis, Guerrero, Devers, and Glaber Torres. And we basically put those six guys, the 22 and under group, and we're, you know, just talking about them. And, you know, he knows Acuna the best, and he predicted Acuna's – stardom before he ever even came to the big leagues but I asked him about that six that group of six players and he said I've seen all of them I've seen some more than others he said I will tell you this if I needed a big at bat a great at bat in a big spot the guy I would choose of that six is Juan Soto wow and that's including Acuna who just had a ridiculous year yeah I wonder That's what it correct. is. So he's got great is. plate discipline. So what, you, so what? Yes, it is. It's that. It is absolutely that. Yeah. It's the yeah, plate the discipline. Mo- it's I'm going to swing at strikes. Is a big. Is yeah. like last night. You had Hater spraying it all over the place, and you knew that he wasn't going to chase. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So when you look at the Dodgers series, obviously Corbin goes Thursday night. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I kind of said earlier. I kind of. I would. It would depend for me how they they do on Thursday. If Corbin wins, yeah. I think you're kind of playing with some house money there. You can start Sanchez in Game Two. That way, you have your two studs on full rest coming back. But what, what do you think they do? I don't know yet. You know, we were talking about that last night because, I mean, as uh, I mean, as it as it stands right now, it's uh, it, it's an interesting one. I don't. It really depends. Was that, what was he? Thirty-six pitches last night. Thirty-four pitches. Right. Um, so I, I'm I'm not sure. I, I think that I think that the thought is probably right in terms of winning in terms of winning game one. I mean, you prefer a little more of a routine, but um, man, you'd really love to be able to just throw your dudes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I, I think that the biggest part is that you know you don't want to be 
near, with all due respect, to Anibal Sanchez, that if you were to, you know, put Strauss, if you didn't do it dependent on a win or a loss and you put Strauss in that spot and you and you ended up finding yourself in a spot where Anibal Sanchez is starting an elimination game, you don't really want that. Oh, 100%. And with the you know Do- I mean? yeah yeah with the Dodgers would the Dodgers go left right left and start Kershaw first and then Bueller in between or would they start? Hey, Bueller? I, I, you know what? It's, <laughs> we're talking about that. I don't I don't think it's as much left right left as that they like Bueller I position or at least to to uh, he he needs to be in a position I would say to to come and and start uh, you know a. a potential elimination spot. So I, I think not, you know, obviously not a three, but I, I would, I would think they'll start Bueller in, in game one. Um, I, if, if it's Kershaw, then it would be Kershaw Bueller, but not to start split up the lefties so that in a spot where if Kershaw is starting it, the second time through that they would even be able to bring Bueller in behind him. Right. So I, I personally would, I would go, I would go Bueller, Kershaw, Ryu personally if I were them. I think from a ceiling standpoint, Bueller's their best pitcher, and from a ceiling standpoint, um, Bueller's the guy that can give them the most electric start. Is that he's the guy that can, that has the greatest potential, in my opinion, to go out and and just deal. 